Before we get to more of tonight's games, let's rewind to last night. Maysville got their season rolling when they hosted Crooksville for the fourth and final Thursday night opener between the rivals. NBL reporter Connor Martin was there the entire game for this, for this matchup, and it's always an exciting one, Connor. That's right, Danny. And after being trunked by Maysville 45-15 to start the season last year, the Ceramics were vying for revenge with plans of taming the Panthers in last night's game. And at the beginning, things seemed to be going Crooksville's way. They forced Maysville into a three and out on their first possession and followed that up with a 49-yard run by quarterback Landon Hinkle. That run set up a 28-yard field goal to give the Ceramics an early 3-0 lead. Though, that lead quickly vanished as Evan, Brown's haw as Evan Brown hauls in that pass from Connor Sidewell and gallops 36 yards into the end zone to end, to end the first quarter. But Maysville was not done yet. As the Panthers scored on their very next drive, Sidwell finds Carson Jarrett wide open on the flat on fourth and one, who takes it to the 40-yard score. The Panthers look to deliver the dagger early in the game, an interception on Cooksville's very next drive, but could do nothing with the great field possession and had to settle with a 14-3 lead heading into the locker room. The Panthers were on the prowl to start the third quarter, utilizing their hurry-up offense to march down the field. Capping off the drive with Evan Brown trying to take the edge, but instead, he decides to play hot potato. The ball bounces into the air, right into the claws of Car Carson Jarrett, who then extends the lead to 21-3. Brody Williams did his best to get some life back into his team as he reverses field and sprints down the sideline for a 74-yard score. However, on Maysville's very first play on their next drive, Caden Ashcroft says, hey, anything you can do, I can do better, and roars down the field for a 77-yard run to put the Panthers up 28-9, ending the third. Kershaw had a couple of chances to come back into the fourth, but, it could not, but they could not capitalize on any of those opportunities, with the Panthers taking this one 35-23 in front of their home crowd. Wow, what a way to start off the season for the Panthers after a lot of people really thought that they'd take a step back after losing so many players like Chase Roberts. Well, Danny, it's obvious that no one player could step up and fill that void. But Coach Clark understood that more than anyone, he implemented a running back committee approach with over six kids taking part in carrying the rock. Whether it was the big six foot, 220 pound fullback, Caden Mercer, pounding it up the middle, or the quick Jared Carson attacking the sidelines. There were plenty of fresh bodies in the backfield. I mean, quarterback Connor Sidwell even got in on the action. Speaking of Sidwell, how did the young quarterback fare in his first start of his career? You know, Danny, Connor had a very unique night for his first start behind center. He started off the night with four incompletions and ended the game only completing three of nine passes. However, with all that said, his three completions went all for touchdowns. But anytime you get to end the game in a victory formation, you must be doing something right. Yeah, no one can question that, but what does Crooksville have to look forward to? Honestly, they should keep their heads up high. After this tough loss, they played Maysville extremely hard and should use this to propel them through the rest of their season. Though, one thing may spike some concern is star running back Chaz Love. Love left the game early in the fourth quarter and he did not return, but he was seen later with ice on his knee. There has been no confirmation on his injury or a timetable for his return, but when we know, you'll know. And as you can see here, both teams favored the run in this game, using the option to get multiple players involved in the offense. When these teams did throw the ball, Kirkville stayed with short, quick receiver screens, while Maysville only completed three passes. But like I said earlier, those three passes went for 153 yards and three touchdowns, according to the Maysville stat book. Great work, Connor. Thanks a lot.